We are Carl and Caddy. Together, we are Nowhere Bound Touring. We've been adventuring for over three years now around Australia in our truck and our caravan. Sharing our full-time life on the road, we take you to some interesting and unique locations along with sharing tips and tricks of how to make caravan life that little bit easier. G'day everyone. You might be wondering what I'm doing back under the truck. Well, this morning I'm going to do a bit of maintenance. We have been overdue to have our kingpin bearings greased. I have done the other side, the passenger side, when we broke the CV, but I haven't done the driver's side. They should be greased every 60,000 Ks, is what they recommend, and that's what we're doing this morning. So, to grease the kingpin bearings, my short way this is how i do it jack it up the king pin bearings are held in place by these two plates top and bottom all i'm going to do is simply undo these plates this will come off with it the steering will come up and i will grease them from the outside so i don't need to take them all apart to grease them I've checked it on the other side when I had it all apart and this works just fine. So I'm going to grease the top and bottom, put them back together, put the wheel back on and we're done. I'll show you how it goes. If I'm working under the vehicle I try and use two jacks wherever I can just for safety purposes in case one of them fails we've still got the other one. I also chock the back wheels of course and we should be good to go, reasonably safe. All good, let's get into it. So, to do these kingpin bearings, you're supposed to take the whole hub assembly off. But, as you can see, you can just get in there and do it. I can't take this last bolt out because it interferes. This one was just made it. Had a little bit of an issue with clearance on there, but we got it off. So basically, I'm gonna just repack this from the outside in, and you'll be able to push the grease past the bearing um, all the way through. So that's all I'm going to do. And then put it back together. Of course, make sure there's no dirt in it, hey? You don't want any pieces of dirt trapped between here and the mating faces because they're shims and all of that sort of thing and it will allow water in and all of that. So you definitely want it clean um, to put back together, of course. Radio. We'll pack it with some grease. Make sure my hands are clean. Just going to try and work it through the bearing. Oh, 
I know this worked okay because like I said when I did the other one when I had it apart I did it this way and I checked to make double sure that it would get through the bearing All done, and wheel can go back on. That's it. We're done. All looks good. Now, what I did need that I haven't mentioned is I needed a slimline 17 millimeter ring spanner. If you look at my standard one, it's much thicker. So I did need a slim one of those that I borrowed from the farm. So I'm gonna to have to get myself one of those unless I wanna grind this down, which I don't really wanna do that. So I will go and buy a, a slimmer one so that I can do this job every 60,000 Ks. Keep the King King bearings all nice and healthy. So there you go. That's all you really need, plus standard toolkit some anti-seize on my wheel studs that's what I always like to do otherwise I find that if you take all your wheels on and off on and off lots that they tend to start to wear down the studs just from grime and crap and whatever else on them so that's what I do
So with these wheels, they do not center on the center hub. The little center of the rim is an oversized, so it doesn't support any load. So what I've got here is some tapered type wheel nuts, if you want to put it that way. And they just center the rim around the stud pattern. So then I can do up the existing wheel nuts, the three that are left on there, tighten them up. Then I can remove these and put some more wheel nuts in their place. So this is just to get the rim centered on the studs. Then you can drop the normal wheel nuts. And the wheel's all centered. No add around. That's what they do for these alloy rims. They don't have a tapered wheel nut like a standard steel rim. Take off the centering. Then I'll check the wheel nuts again in a hundred or so case just to make sure they're tight. But I've never had one that has been even slightly loose. Probably because I tend to tighten them up fairly well. Maybe a little bit too tight. One day I shall get a torque wrench so that I can um, know what they're supposed to be. So I can do them up to the correct torque. They're supposed to be about 400, I think it's 370, 400 Newton meters. So fairly tight. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. If you want a reminder, hit the bell. And remember, we always love a thumbs up. If you'd like to be more involved, check out our Patreon page or our website.